In this video, we will learn about gross anatomy of digestive system of ox. Digestive system of ox consists of group of organs which are concerned with prehension, mastication, digestion and absorption of food in the body and expulsion of unabsorbed food material. The digestive system is comprised of two parts, digestive tube and accessory organs. The different segments of digestive tube are mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, which is further comprised of cecum, colon and rectum, and the terminal portion, the anus. The accessory organs are associated in two areas. The organs related to the mouth cavity include teeth, tongue and the salivary glands. The liver and pancreas are accessory organs associated with the intestines. Mouth extends from lips to entrance into the pharynx. Mouth is interiorly bounded by lips. Lateral walls are formed by cheeks. Roof of the mouth is formed by hard palate. The tongue is present at the floor of the mouth. Ventrally, it is formed by body and remi of mandible and posteriorly by the soft palate. The interior opening of mouth cavity bounded by lips is called rima oris. The posterior opening of the mouth cavity into pharynx is called isthmus fossium. The mouth cavity is subdivided into two parts by teeth and alveolar process. The first is mouth cavity proper, which is the space between the dental arcs. Second is the vestibule. It is the space bounded by lips and cheek external to teeth and alveolar processes. The oral vestibule or the vestibule, it is divided into two parts. That is buccal vestibule between cheek teeth and cheeks and labial vestibule between incisors and lips. The two cavities communicate via interdental space diastema. That is the space between the last incisor and cheek teeth. Next is the lips. The entrance to the oral cavity is bounded by edges of the upper and lower lips which unite at the angle of the mouth. The lips are thick, wide and immobile musculomembranous folds which surround the rima oris or entrance to the mouth cavity. The angle of union of the lips or labial commissures are situated few centimeters behind the level of the corner incisor tooth at the interdental space between incisors and the cheek teeth also called as diastema. The middle part of the external surface of upper lip and the surface between the nostrils is bare and is termed as muzzle or planum nasolabial or it is also called as nasolabial plate. The muzzle is kept moist by a fluid secreted by the nasolabial glands present under the skin. The surface of the muzzle shows irregular, small, polygonal areas on which the duct of the nasolabial glands open. The short, blunt, cornified papilla are present on the inside of the lips near the angle of the mouth and are called as labial papilla. Next is the cheeks. The cheeks form the lateral wall of the mouth cavity and are continuous with the lips in front. The cheeks consist of three layers. The outermost layer is formed by the skin. The middle layer is chiefly made up of buccinator muscles and the buccal glands. The caudal portion of the cheek is supported by masseter muscle. 
the innermost layer of the cheek is the mucous membrane lined by the epithelium the mucous membrane of the cheek presents large pointed conical horny papilla which are directed backwards towards the isthmus fossum or the opening of the mouth cavity into the pharynx next part is the palate the roof of the oral cavity and oropharynx are formed by the palate the palate is partly bony and called as the hard palate and partly it is soft tissue partition called as the soft palate the soft palate separates the digestive and the respiratory passages of the head the first part or the hard palate it is located rostral to the membranous soft palate and forms the roof of the oral cavity hard palate is divided into two symmetrical halves by a median palatine raphe on either side of the palatine raphe there are present transversely directed palatine ridges the number of palatine ridges varies from 15 to 19 in number these palatine ridges are lined by papillae which are caudally directed to guide the food backwards palatine ridges extend up to the 2/3 of the length of hard palate and are nearly straight serrated with the exception of few palatine ridges at the posterior end upper incisors are absent in hawks and are replaced by dental pad between dental pad and the first palatine ridge a small median swelling the incisive papilla is present on either side of the incisive papilla furrow is present in which the incisive ducts open on either side of the papilla the next part is the soft palate soft palate is the caudal continuation of hard palate which extends into the pharyngeal cavity it separates respiratory portion of the pharynx or the nasopharynx dorsally from the digestive portion or oropharynx of the pharynx ventrally the caudal border of the soft palate reaches near the base of the epiglottis floor of the mouth cavity floor is visible when tongue is raised two prominent structures are visible on the floor of the mouth cavity the first is the sublingual cruncle and second is the frenulum lingui sublingual cruncle also called as barb is present opposite to the corner tooth at the level of lateral incisor on each side the duct of the mandibular and ventral part of sublingual salivary glands open on the sublingual cruncle frenulum lingui is a median fold of mucous membrane which passes from floor to the ventral surface of tongue linear series of horny papillae they are seen on the floor on either side of frenulum lingui near which the ducts of the dorsal part of sublingual salivary gland open next is the tongue tongue is the chief organ of prehension in ox and largely fills the oral cavity it is situated on the floor of mouth between rami of mandible it consists of three parts named apex body and the root of the tongue the first part or the apex is the free anterior part of the tongue next part is the body which forms the bulk of the tongue and is present caudal to the apex it is attached to the floor of the oral cavity and is followed by root of the tongue the surface of the tongue opposite the palate is called as dorsum lingui it is raised in its caudal part 
to form an elliptical prominence called torus lingui the depression in front of torus lingui is called as fossa lingui the tongue is lined by different type of the papillae the first is the filiform papillae they are present on the dorsum of the tongue and the margin of the tip these are pointed thread like and caudally directed the conical and flat lenticular papillae are scattered among filiform papillae and they are especially prominent on the torus lingui fungiform papillae are button like and scattered over the dorsum of the tongue along edges of the apex and the lateral surface these papillae they contain taste buds and are gustatory in nature circumvallate papillae these are located on the dorsum of the tongue just anterior to the root and are surrounded by a circular cleft the number of circumvallate papillae varies from 8 to 17 in ox next part is the pharynx the pharynx is a musculomembranous passage common to both the digestive and the respiratory systems it connects nasal and oral cavity with the trachea and the esophagus the cavity of the pharynx has number of openings the first one is the posterior nares or the coini so these are the communication with the nasal cavity second opening is aditus pharyngeus or isthmus fossum it is the opening into the mouth cavity third opening is the aditus laryngeus which is the opening into the larynx the fourth opening is the aditus esophagi it is the entrance into the esophagus next opening is the paired pharyngeal opening of a auditory tube or the eustachian tube these are present as slits in the lateral wall of nasopharynx leading to auditory tube the anterior portion of the pharynx is divided by soft palate into nasopharynx and oropharynx the narrow common caudal portion of the pharynx is called as laryngopharynx the next part is oropharynx it is the part of digestive tract located ventral to the soft palate it extends from oral cavity to the base of the epiglottis next part is the esophagus it is a muscular membrane tube which extends from the pharynx to the stomach it is divided into cervical and the thoracic parts the cervical part begins at the median line above the anterior border of the cricoid cartilage of larynx and continues backwards on the dorsal surface of trachea up to third or fourth cervical vertebrae at this level it crosses to the left of the trachea and continues this relation on the left side of the neck and enters the thoracic cavity thoracic part occupies the dorsal surface of the trachea and continues this position up to the tracheal bifurcation at the level of aortic arc it is pushed to the right of the median plane and enters esophageal hiatus of diaphragm and terminates at atrium ventriculi the next part is the stomach stomach of ox is large and occupies nearly 3/4 of the abdominal cavity it completely fills up the left part of the abdomen except for a small space for the spleen and extends considerably into the right half of the abdomen it has four compartments rumen reticulum omasum and the abomasum 
rumen reticulum omezum together form the fore stomach or the non glandular stomach of the ox abomezum is also called as the glandular stomach or the true stomach in the newborn animals the rumen and reticulum are about half of the abomezum in adult animals rumen is 80% reticulum is 5% omezum is 7 to 8% and abomezum is 8% first we discuss about the rumen it occupies most of the left half of the abdomen and extends considerably over the median plane to the right side it extends from lower part of the 7th or 8th intercostal space to the pelvic inlet The rumen presents two surfaces, two curvatures and two extremities. The two surfaces of rumen are parietal and the visceral surfaces. The parietal surface is convex and is related to the diaphragm, left wall of abdomen, floor of abdomen and the spleen. The visceral surface is related to left kidney intestines liver omezum abomezum the two surfaces are marked by right and left longitudinal grooves dividing it into dorsal and the ventral sac the dorsal curvature of the rumen is convex and is in contact with dorsal abdominal wall and the diaphragm The ventral curvature is also convex and is related to the floor of the abdominal cavity. The cranial extremity of the rumen is divided by cranial transverse groove into dorsal sac or atrium ruminus and ventral sac or the recessus ruminus. The junction of dorsal sac and reticulum form a sort of dome called as atrium ventriculi on which the esophagus terminates the caudal extremity of the rumen is divided by the deep caudal transverse groove into caudo dorsal and the caudo ventral blind sacs the grooves lodge the vessels and the nerves of the rumen the left longitudinal grooves on the parietal surface are connected cranially by cranial transverse grooves and on the visceral surface right longitudinal grooves caudally by caudal transverse grooves these four grooves form a nearly horizontal constriction which divides the rumen into dorsal and the ventral sacs the dorsal and the ventral coronary grooves extend in opposite direction from the caudal end of the longitudinal grooves and mark of the caudo dorsal and caudo ventral blind sacs the ventral coronary groove extends completely around the base of caudo ventral blind sac but the dorsal groove is deficient dorsally and fades away the cavity of the rumen is divided into two sacs by the pillars of the rumen which are muscular folds and correspond to the grooves on the exterior side they project like shelves into the cavity of the rumen the cranial pillar projects cranially between atrium and the recessus ruminus the caudal pillar projects between the two blind sacs the dorsal and ventral coronary pillars arise from the caudal pillar the ventral coronary pillar extends completely around the base of caudo ventral blind sac whereas the dorsal coronary pillar fades away the right longitudinal pillar connects 
the cranial and caudal pillars on the right side and just like the corresponding groove splits into two limbs enclosing an elongated area of the rumen called as insula ruminis the left longitudinal pillar continues the left end of the cranial pillar but it does not join with the caudal pillar the rumino reticular fold corresponds to the rumino reticular groove its free edge forms the ventral and lateral margins of the large oval rumino reticular aperture the mucous membrane of the rumen is brown in color except on the pillars where it is pale it is thickly studded with the papilla and these papilla are not present on the pillars next part is the reticulum reticulum is the cranial most and smallest of the four compartments it is spherical but slightly flattened craniocaudally it lies between the diaphragm and rumen at the level of 6th to 9th intercostal space next about the surfaces of the reticulum the parietal surface of the reticulum is convex and lies against the diaphragm the visceral surface faces backwards is flattened and ends dorsally by joining with the atrium ruminis of the rumen dorsally it is continued without demarcation with the dorsal sac of the rumen while ventrally and to the sides it is sharply separated from the rumen by the deep rumino reticular groove the reticulum on the right side is related to left lobe of the liver omasum and the abomasum on the left side it lies against the costal part of the diaphragm and occasionally it is in contact with the ventral end of the spleen the lesser curvature of the reticulum faces to the right and dorsally connected with the omasum the greater curvature faces to the left and is ventral the right extremity of the reticulum forms a rounded blind sac also called as fundus reticuli which is in contact with the liver omasum and abomasum and lies opposite to the sixth intercostal space the interior of the reticulum is raised into folds about half inch length high enclosing four to six size spaces or cells forming a honeycomb like structure smaller folds subdivide these cells and the bottom of these cells are studded with pointed horny papillae the reticulum joins with the omasum at the reticulo omasal opening which is situated at the lesser curvature of the reticulum important functional and clinical aspect of the reticulum the reticulum acts as a trap for foreign objects ingested by the animals if wire or metal punctures the side of the reticulum which can further pierce the diaphragm and enter the heart and cause traumatic radiculopericarditis or also called as hardware disease hardware disease or traumatic radiculopericarditis can be prevented by using special magnets which can be administered to the animals to decrease the possibility that ingested metal will pierce the digestive tract these magnets they stay in the reticulum for the life of the animal and is they recommended by the university also omasum is ellipsoidal in shape and is situated to the right of the median plane opposite 7th to the 11th rib 
the parietal or the right surface of omasum is related to the liver and the diaphragm the visceral surface is mainly to the left and it is in contact with ventral sac of rumen reticulum and the abomasum omasum is separated from the reticulum by neck like constriction called as column omasi the omasum is also known as the book or many piles because of its many leaf like folds the cavity of the omasum is occupied by longitudinal muscular folds called as lamina omasi which arise from the greater curvature of the omasum total number of the lamina varies from 90 to 130 and 12 to 16 lamina are of largest size between these lamina are present interlaminar recesses these lamini or folds are arranged in a sequence that is 1 4 3 4 2 4 3 4 1 etc number 1 is assigned to the highest fold or the largest one and 4 to the lowest fold or the smallest fold a groove called as sulcus omasi extends from reticulo omasal opening to the omaso abomasal opening omasal pillar crosses the omasal groove near the omaso abomasal opening omaso abomasal opening is free from lamina and is flanked by two becosal folds called as villa abomasica then next part is the abomasum abomasum is the glandular part of the stomach and resembles the simple stomach it is also called as the true stomach it is an elongated pear shaped sac which lies on the abdominal floor from the zygoid cartilage backwards the abomasum is divided into fundus body and a pyloric part the fundus and the body lie on abdominal floor the pyloric part of abomasum is directed dorsolaterally behind the omasum and joins the duodenum at the ventral part of 10th rib the greater curvature of abomasum gives attachment to the superficial part of greater omentum the lesser curvature is related to the greater curvature of omasum cavity of abomasum has a narrow cardiac gland zone close to omaso abomasal junction fundic gland zone is occupied by 12 or more spiral folds these folds reduce in size in the pyloric part which presents a wrinkled appearance a connective tissue elevation called torus pyloricus is present close to the pyloric passage which narrows the passage the next part of digestive system are the intestines it extends from pylorus of stomach to the anus it is divided into small and large intestines small intestine is further subdivided into duodenum jejunum and ileum The large intestine comprises of cecum, colon and rectum. The anal canal is the short terminal part of digestive tract. The location is confined to the right part of abdominal cavity. They are suspended from roof of abdominal cavity by a common peritoneal fold called mesentery and in contact with the right face of rumen and caudal to omasum. The small intestine starts from pylorus and terminates at the ileocecal opening. The duodenum begins at pylorus at the ventral end of 8th or 9th intercostal space. It further consists of three parts. Cranial duodenum is the first part and passes to the visceral surface of liver where it forms 
S-shaped curve called as sigmoid loop or ansa sigmoidea or cranial flexure. The first part of duodenum is attached to liver by omentum. The bile duct opens into the duodenum at the second part or the second bend of the S curve. The next or the second part is the descending duodenum and it runs backward to the tuber coxae where it turns forward forming iliac flexure or the caudal flexure. The next part is the ascending duodenum. It extends forward in contact with the terminal part of colon and is connected to colon by duodenocolic fold. Ventral to pancreas, duodenum turns ventrally at the left side of cranial mesenteric artery and is continued into the jejunum. The pancreatic duct enters the descending duodenum 30 to 40 cm distal to the entry of pile duct. The next and the longest part is called jejunum and it is the most mobile part of the small intestine. Due to its long mesentery and it comprises of good number of coils attached at their border of mesentery. These coils are constricted and dilated to form U-shaped tubular loops by the attachment of mesentery. The jejunal lymph nodes are present along the folds of mesentery near its loops. Jejunum lies mainly in the space bounded medially by the rumen's ventral sac and dorsally by the large intestine, laterally and ventrally by abdominal wall and anteriorly by omasum and abomasum. The next part is known as ileum, which is the straight terminal part of small intestine passing cranially ventral to cecum to which it is connected by ileocecal fold. It ends at ileocecocolic junction. The next part is the large intestine. It extends from terminal part of ileum to the anus and it is situated at the dorsal aspect of right side of abdominal cavity. It also comprised of further three parts, cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum is a blind cul-de-sac tube intercalated between the small intestine and colon. It is cranially continuous in front with the colon and conventional line of demarcation between the junction of the ileum with the large intestine. The rounded caudal blind end of cecum commonly lies at the pelvic inlet. Colon is the next part of large intestine which is further divided into three parts that is ascending colon, transverse colon and descending colon. Ascending colon is comprised of proximal loop, spiral loop and the distal loop. The proximal loop forms S-shaped curve which is situated between cecum and descending duodenum which is followed by the spiral loop and it comprises of one and a half centripetal coils which spiral towards the center and a central flexure. It reverses direction with the centrifugal coils. It returns further towards the periphery. The number of centrifugal coils is equal to the centripetal coils. The next continuation is the distal loop which is present medial to the proximal loop and ascending duodenum and is continuous with the transverse colon. The transverse colon then passes in front of the cranial mesenteric artery from right to the left to become the descending colon. The descending colon passes caudally together with the ascending duodenum in the left side of abdominal cavity and it becomes continuous with the next part known as rectum. The rectum extends from pelvic inlet to the terminal part called as anus. It runs as almost straight or slightly oblique course through the pelvic cavity. It is related dorsally to the roof of pelvic cavity, ventrally to the bladder and urethra in males or uterus and vagina in female. The caudal part presents a dilation termed as ampulla recti. Anus is the terminal part of the elementary canal. 
Now we will learn about the accessory organs of digestive system which includes salivary glands, liver and pancreas. Salivary glands are the extramural glands which empty their secretions into the digestive system via ducts. Their secretions like saliva keeps the mouth moist, facilitates the mastication and helps in bolus formation and swallowing by the animal. They are further classified into major and minor salivary glands. Major salivary glands are parotid, mandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Minor salivary glands include the labial, buccal, lingual and palatine glands. In this video, we will primarily learn about major salivary glands of ox. The first is the parotid salivary gland. It is a triangular, long, reddish-brown gland situated on the masseter muscle along with the caudal border of vertical part of ramus of the mandible. The dorsal part of parotid gland is wide and thick, placed close near the base of the ear. The ventral end of the gland is narrow and follows the caudal border of mandible and is deeply related to large mandibular gland. The medial surface is related to the parotid lymph nodes. Stenson's duct or the parotid duct leaves the gland at the medial aspect of the ventral part and along with the facial artery and facial vein, it runs along the ventral and the anterior border of the masseter muscle into the vascular groove and reaches on the lateral surface of the face. It opens in the buccal vestibule opposite to the fifth upper cheek tooth. The next is the mandibular salivary gland. It is larger than the parotid gland and is lobulated. It extends in a curve along the medial side of mandible. The pointed dorsal end of gland is near the wings of the atlas and ventral end lies in the intermandibular space, almost in contact with the ventral end of other gland. The mandibular duct leaves the gland at middle of the concave border. It runs between mylohyoideus and hyoglossus muscle, which open on the sublingual caruncle. The next is the sublingual salivary glands. They consist of two parts called as polystomatic or diffused part, monostomatic or the compact parts. The polystomatic part is present directly under the mucous membrane of floor of mouth and the monostomatic part is located anterior to the polystomatic part. The sublingual duct accompanies the mandibular duct and opens along with it on the sublingual caruncle. Liver is the largest gland of the body which occupies the abdominal cavity and is both exocrine and endocrine in function. Bile is the exocrine product of liver. Other functions of liver include glycogen storage, drug detoxification, plasma protein production and also acts as a hemopoietic organ in fetal life. It lies in the abdominal cavity almost entirely to the right of the median plane and extends obliquely downward and forward from 7th or 8th to the 13th rib. The liver of ox presents two surfaces and four borders. The parietal surface or the diaphragmatic surface is convex and applied against the right part of the diaphragm and a small part of it is in direct contact with the last two ribs and the flank region. Visceral surface is concave and very irregular. It presents impressions of the organs with which it is in contact in the animal. It presents omasal impression for omasum, reticular impression for reticulum, abomasal impression for abomasum, and cystic impression for the gall bladder. The portal fissure or hepatic porta is a well defined depression situated dorsal to the omasal impression. This fissure contains hepatic artery, bile duct, portal vein and several large hepatic lymph glands or nodes. 
dorsal and lateral to it a part of the pancreas is attached the borders of the liver borders of liver are dorsal ventral medial or left border lateral or the right border the dorsal border is short and thick and presents a renal impression which accommodates the right kidney and adrenal the ventral border is short and thin the lateral or the right border is thin and is marked by umbilical fissure the medial or the left border is thick and it presents the esophageal notch below its middle above the esophageal notch the caudal vena cava passes caudally and is partially embedded in the body of liver the lobes of liver it is divided into left lobe quadrate lobe right lobe and the caudate lobe the left lobe is present ventral to the imaginary line connecting the notch for round ligament with the esophageal notch dorsal to the gall bladder the right lobe of liver is present between the right and left lobes quadrate and caudate lobes are present caudate lobe has a papillary process projecting towards the portal fissure and a caudate process which protrudes from dorsal border of liver and forms the renal impression the ligaments of liver the first one is a right triangular ligament it attaches the dorsal border to the right of the caudate process and attaches the liver to the abdominal wall hepatorenal ligament attaches the liver to the right kidney left triangular ligament attaches the liver to the diaphragm in the region of esophageal notch the next is the coronary ligament it surrounds the caudal vena cava and extends from right triangular ligament along the diaphragmatic surface of liver to the caudal vena cava and reaches the left triangular ligament the next ligament is the falciform ligament which attaches the diaphragm to the parietal surface of liver round ligament is the next ligament which is present at the umbilical notch and which is a remnant of umbilical vein the next ligament is the lesser omentum which attaches the liver from esophageal notch to the portal fissure with the parietal surface of the omasum the next organ is the gall bladder it is a pear shaped sac which lies on the visceral surface and largely in contact with the abdominal wall the next accessory gland is the pancreas pancreas is commonly termed as abdominal salivary gland it is present mostly at the right of the median plane and is irregularly quadrilateral in outline it is divided into right and the left lobe which is joined by a body there is one accessory pancreatic duct which arises from the right lobe and enters into the descending duodenum pancreas presents two surfaces and four borders the dorsal surface is attached to the liver and diaphragm and mostly covered by the peritoneum the ventral face of the right kidney and right adrenal the ventral surface faces downward the right border is the longest of the four borders and is nearly straight which is related to the second part of the duodenum the left border is short concave the next border that is the cranial border is nearly the straight border and is situated across the liver at the level of the portal fissure the next and the last is the caudal border which is irregular and it also presents a deep notch through which the portal vein passes obliquely to the portal fissure of the liver